things go wrong with these guys who are confessing their feelings and stuff, they just start amping up the actions, going out of their way for the girl and stuff. And then in return, they're kind of hurting themselves by doing that when they're not even sure like where the girl is at, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I used to be like that. I used to, I definitely used to be like that. I was like, dude, I'm so nice to this girl. I don't know why she doesn't like me. Like, dude, I'm like the best guy. And for this episode, we're going to rate how toxic we thought the memory was. And James, you can write, or you can rate yourself too, I guess. But on three. All right, one, two, three. 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 Oh, stop it. A time when we were toxic. Hi, welcome to the Memory Club podcast. We're like a book club, but we share our memories instead. I'm Bit. Uh, my name is James, and then we have a special guest, my friend Michelle. Hello. Welcome, Michelle. <laughs> welcome. So Michelle is going to be our second guest for our podcast. I can't believe we're already having our second guest. Um, how does it feel to guest in our podcast? I was really excited. You know, um, I didn't know James was doing a podcast until I saw him post it on IG. And I was like, you know, that's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I have always wanted to do a podcast too, but just never like got, got it started or anything. So mm-hmm. When he asked me the guest star, I was like, ooh, like, I got some stories to tell. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you got to talk about when you're, like, toxic, though. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, uh, mm-hmm. I might not want to talk too much this episode, but I'm really, <laughs> I'm really excited um, you guys got me guest starring on this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Glad, glad you're here. Yeah. So like she said, um, today we're going to talk about a time when we were toxic. So... <laughs> um it's like even you're when you're living life nobody's perfect right we all have everybody has a toxic trait <laughs> a toxic moment that we're not very mm-hmm. proud of right and mm-hmm. i think like just discussing it to get together with your friends like this helps you kind of self-reflect yeah. and then you get better you know mm-hmm. and for the theme of this week toxicity mm-hmm. we're uh drinking some alcohol right yeah so- I'm drinking mm-hmm. right now, Jameson and Coke. What are you guys drinking? I'm drinking. I got some oh, go ahead. tea, something chill for tonight. Mm-hmm. It's just five percent, so yeah, <laughs> it, it is a Monday night, so um, it is a Monday night. <laughs> it is a Monday night, but um, I'm drinking my soju. I'm I'm taking a chill too, you know. Okay, just drinking my soju. Chill. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, should we have a drink together real quick before? Yeah. We... Cheers, guys. Cheers. All right, guys. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Wait, James, sign though. I literally had that same mug with an M on it. Oh, you do? I do. Is it from Target? I actually got it as a gift from a friend. <laughs> okay. From My friend got it from Target. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe it is from Target. But yeah, it's really nice, you know? It, it's so personalized and it's. Has my letter. So personalized. <laughs> so personalized. <laughs> okay, so how did you guys, I guess, interpret this this uh, topic or this memory? A time when you were toxic. Mm. For me... I personally... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, for me, I just pretty much look back at, like, my earliest kind of, like, times... And I felt like that's when I was, like, most toxic. When, like, mm. maybe my, <laughs> like, early 20s, uh, when I, like, I was, like, barely starting to socialize. That's mm-hmm. when I was, like, super, like, toxic, I feel like. Or, like, I just didn't know I was toxic. But mm. that's how I kind of interpret it. Like, something, like, naive or, like, something, I don't know, that wasn't, like, a healthy healthy version of me. Mm. Or how did you guys approach it? Um, I personally was thinking in terms of a like a wrong mindset that I used to have. Um, and it's based on, I think it's low-key based on like my personal trauma and stuff like that. And that 
kind of shaped my worldview and how I thought about certain things. That which led to a like a toxic, like a moral mindset. Um, so that's how I interpret it. What about you, Michelle? Um, when I first heard of the topic, I was kind of struggling thinking of specific examples that I did that were toxic. But then I started to figure out things that I didn't think was toxic, but to other people was toxic. Mm. So I feel like definitely more in relationships than friendship, I guess, Mm. because I think being toxic comes from a place of um, like insecurity, inability, inability to communicate effectively, and just selfish actions and stuff. So just thinking back on more of those terms, I do reflect back and view some of the actions that I've done in previous relationships as toxic. Uh-huh. Um, it was funny because it's not really stuff that you keep in the back of your head, you know, like, oh, what have I done that was toxic? So thinking mm-hmm. back, like James knows I was struggling until I think of like things that I've done. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, um, stuff like guilt tripping, emotional manipulation, stuff like that. They're all forms of being toxic. So Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So James, you wanna get into your uh experience, your memory? Sure. So my memory is when I was in freshman to sophomore year in college. And during this time, so I was watching a lot of those like um pickup girls videos. It was trending at the time too, like on YouTube. And they would tell you like, oh, it's about the number scam. It's about this, this. And I like kind of like really follow their beliefs. And so one of the things that kind of I picked up from that and my personal experience was that like, oh, like I can't keep women as friends. They're only for dating. Um, Because one, I think is because back in high school, I was so traumatized because I got friend zoned so many times. And (laughs) I, and this is really unhealthy. And I think I really definitely learned my lesson is that when you don't get certain things that you want, you, you're kind of blame it on others. You blame it on the external, right? You never take accountability of yourself. So I was like, you know, like it's, it's the girls, you know, like it's their problem, their fault. So like, I can't be friends with them. They always friend zone me. So like, I think I had this like, just built up trauma and angst. So Um, I started, you know, incorporating these things that I learned from these videos and like these own ideas that I kind of had built up over the years be like, oh, yeah. So when you're with girls, you always got to be flirty with them. Um, You got to be like physical with them. And like, you know, you always have to try to (laughs) make these like uh, romantic or some kind of like, um, you know, like a sexual tension with these (laughs) girls in order to not get friend zone, you know, like I was so determined to not get friend zone. So I would literally just like, um, even with friends that I've known for years. Right. So I have a friend that I've known since like very young. Right. So we're like one of the closest friends. And normally when we first meet, we don't really hug or anything because we're just like so used to just be like, Hey, what's up, bro? But then, like, I tried to change things up, you know? I was like, hey, give me a hug. You know, like, I tried to, like, act all alpha male, and I'm, like, trying to be all physical, and I'm trying to portray certain, like, uh, you know, like, body um, image and stuff like that. And it was really toxic now that I look back, right? Because um, clearly, like, I, right now, I have a lot of girls that are friends, like Michelle right here. Like, she's my friend, and... Obviously, like, we don't have any, like, a, like a romantic thing going on. We're just friends. And it's like, you know, it's just absolutely nothing wrong with that. So, you know, obviously, I changed my mindset from that. But, you know, I looking back, it was such a, like, a toxic mindset that stemmed from my own insecurities and my own traumas that, you know, like, oh, like, you know, it's it, I can't get girls. I don't want to get friend zone, you know. And, you know, like, instead of just, like, kind of changing my approach a little bit differently, instead of doing something so drastic, you know, like, um, you know, instead of just being, like, a simp for a girl and just, like, doing whatever they want you to do, 
you know. Actually, <laughs> it, yeah, but uh, there's a reason why Viet's laughing because um, like the joke within my group is like, oh, James is a simp. James is a simp, which I don't deny. Which I don't deny. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I definitely kind of <laughs> became better at it, you know. So mm. um, oh, okay, okay. So yeah, so that's that's my story. Have you guys had any um like experiences like that? <coughs> so I see what you're saying, but I've always I don't know. I've always had friends that were girls like that I didn't really see romantically. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard for me to relate to that. Um, I, again, I think our dating styles are different too they are very so different it's it's kind of hard for me to relate to that aspect yeah but i could see i could see why you're you would like swing the other way so you would you know get friend zone like so hard and you like try to swing that away to just like try to get what you want i could see that because people always do the like pendulum like there's no like balance really it's just like whew, like it's a crazy swing you know yeah there's like overcompensation when you try to make adjustment to uh, like a certain like bad traits that you have i feel like when people make adjustments but i don't know what about you michelle do you kind of relate to that or do you relate to james's story as as a girl it's a little different um i feel like when i first initially become friends with a guy and I immediately like don't have any romantic attraction towards him. For me, it doesn't really build with time because the way that I talk to the guy and hang out with the guy and stuff like that, it's kind of different just as friends than if I'm trying to like get him to like me. Mm. So I feel like after it passes a certain like threshold, I just can't ever see us as like being something romantic. You know, like, if you think of us, like, how we start being friends, James, right. I feel like there was never really any, like, oh, maybe we could date, or, like, maybe yeah. there was something there, you know? I feel like right from the get go. <laughs> okay. Not that I'm saying anything there's about you and stuff, it's just the way that we started, like, hanging out and talking, it was purely, like, we can be good friends, Yeah, you know? Yeah, it was, it was, it there was, was it, no, there was no, like, a romantic like vibe to it it was more like yeah uh, i know that that's how it is for me but i know i have guy friends who say that when they feel like there's a connection with a girl there's like that natural instinct where it's like oh maybe it made sense for us to date like oh we're such good friends we'll probably be even better partners you know but it's it's just not like that at all and it's usually when one person gets that mindset that's when people start getting butt hurt and expectations are like you know set and so people are disappointed i think that's when kind of a toxic mindset starts coming out Mm. type of thing but that's just how it is for me as a girl though so completely different (laughs) wait michelle are you are you like the type to make the first move or are you just more like um i'm gonna let them make the first (laughs) yeah are you that type or what if I do like a guy, I feel like I do a pretty good job dropping hints or letting him know that I'm interested. And But I am pretty like protective of myself. I wouldn't be dropping hints and letting him know I like him if I wasn't at least like 80% sure that he was showing some interest back. Oh. So, mm. so you're still kind of like, oh, I don't want to re- get rejected kind of vibe. That you is wanna true. Make sure. You want to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm going to be dropping hands, possibly ruining the friendship, or even making a fool of myself, I need to know that, like, he's got some interest back. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but question. But I know you said that um, when you see a guy as a friend, you don't really think about, like, a romantic relationship, and it's hard for you to think about it once you already established that friendship. Yes. So then, but if there is any chance, right, of a like, what do you think is like the best way for a guy 
to at least take one shot at the girl that they like and he's a friend to kind of at least for you to give a chance to that guy hmm for me i really like the guy being straightforward with me mm. you know like we're hey now just the two of us or something and if he just tells me that he likes me i would respect that a lot more than him on his own suddenly doing all these nice gestures and going out of his way and stuff and then uh-huh expecting something back out of me mm. before he even tells me that he likes me mm. you know because i feel like that's where a lot of things go wrong with these guys who are confessing their feelings and stuff they just start amping up the actions going out of their way for the girl and stuff and then in return they're kind of hurting themselves by doing that when they're not even sure like where the girl is at you know mm-hmm I, I used to be like that. I used to. I definitely used to be like that. I'm like, dude, I'm so nice to this girl. I don't know why she doesn't like me. Like, dude, I'm like the best guy. But I That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just FYI, I'm not. I'm not like that anymore, guys. Okay, I'm just saying that was me, like in high school. Okay. High school, okay. James was very normal. immature. That's, okay. It's not that surprising, you know. <laughs> Yes, yes. <coughs> That's interesting. Um, so yeah, that was it for uh, my story. Um, okay. I think... And for this episode, we're gonna rate how toxic we thought that, or the memory was. And mm-hmm. James, you could write, or you could rate yourself too, I guess. But on three, you wanna rate how toxic you guys think uh, James' uh, memory was? Alright, one, two... Three, three, three. <laughs> oh, Wait, seven. Seven. Okay, okay, maybe, 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 yeah. Maybe I was like over. Okay. Um. Wow, I don't dude. think was it's that, that toxic. toxic. Like, oh, maybe it wasn't that toxic, toxic. But I feel <laughs> okay. I guess it just depends on what level you took it to. I guess if you were just like doing stuff. Mm-hmm. for like everyone just to be like you know on their good side you know like mm. I, I i don't know what level you took it to basically but i i think the level i took it to is just i just didn't want everybody to see me as like oh yeah he james he's a nice guy he's just that one friendly guy that i'm friends mm. with i think okay. that's the image that i wanted to stop portraying i i think there was a part of me that loki said you know like I would rather be called like, oh, dude, he's so douchey than like, <laughs> oh, yeah, James, yeah, I only see you as a friend. I'm sorry. You know, like, I hated hearing that at, the, at one point. So, um, mm-hmm. I think I just try to avoid being too friendly or just too nice to girls, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I realized that <laughs> that's just my trait as a person. Like, I just, I feel like I'm just nice. Okay, okay. It's kind of weird to say out of my own mouth that I'm a nice person, but <laughs> I think you're a nice person, James. <laughs> Thank you. Keep, keep saying it, guys. I'm James is a nice person. <laughs> but um, um. So I think I just kind of accepted who I am as a person, and you just gotta work, play off of your strength, you know. So okay. that's me now. I, I know for me, like, as a girl, when I first meet a guy and he's just too overly friendly, he, or, like, he's too protective and stuff, like, from the start, even though we don't really know each other or we haven't really established a friendship or relationship yet, mm-hmm. um, the fact that he's so friendly, it's unattractive, mm-hmm. you know? It's kind of, mm-hmm. like, not even friend zone. you're kind of, like, brother right zone. I'm taking notes. <laughs> you're, like, brother zoned. You know, like, this is a guy that I feel safe with, that I want to hang out with and stuff, but this mm-hmm. isn't a guy that, like, I want to hook up with, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I totally get what you mean. <laughs> okay. All right. Michelle, do you want to talk about yeah. your memory? Yeah. So, I feel like this isn't one exact memory, but it's an action that I've done in multiple past relationships. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, not a lot. Okay, like two times that mm-hmm. I noticed um, that it's pretty toxic of me. 
So, um, <laughs> I don't want to expose myself, but <laughs> when I would be fighting with a guy, like over text, over phone, or like I was at his house when we were fighting, I would, I'd say over text, I would block him, I would unfollow him on social media, I would hang up, all that, right? Like when we're fighting, and then I just shut down, I shut off everything, and I block him, right? And then I give it like five minutes. And if he's not blowing up my phone, then I get upset. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't do it to be annoying. I do it to show him how upset I am. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I would go like the full nine just to show him how upset I am. Mm -hmm. And then I would turn it back on him when he's not blowing up my phone or he's not coming to my house. Because uh -huh. then <laughs> I do that to see if the guy would care enough to like, blow up my phone bad or actually come to my house mm. you know and then mm. i know from a guy's perspective it's like well if she want to act like that i'm gonna let her act like that you know but like <laughs> but as a girl if i don't see you putting effort back in and like trying to get in contact with me when i purposely like blocked you off on everything uh -huh. then i just get even more mad mm. you know <laughs> see the thing yeah. is I feel like if you like blocked, like if someone were to block me or like, I I I would take that as like, oh, maybe they need space, you know. So that's kind of yeah. like, I'm kind of getting like mis mixed signals from you <laughs> when you yeah. actually want someone to come and apologize or come like, you know, talk about the problem or issue. If someone blocked me, I'd be like, oh, they don't want to talk to me, right? I don't know. That's that's how I see it. But No, yeah, like that's the normal thing why you would block someone. Like you don't want to talk to them, you don't want to get in talk contact. I'm telling you, that's why that that was such like a toxic like guilt tripping slash emotional manipulation thing mm -hmm. that I would do. Is then I do it so I could get the guy to see how upset I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that I would expect him to be loving me back up you know so i feel like that's that's pretty bad and i've done it before in past relationships mm -hmm. um but i think that also comes with bad communication you know like i <laughs> i should have just talked it out and everything instead of just getting extremely mad mm -hmm. you know but i feel like that's just me in general like in the moment i would get like really mad Mm -hmm. and blocked and all that but then like the next morning i'm like completely okay again type of thing and i think i do it <laughs> i think i do it just to like see how much does he care about fixing things with me or is he okay with letting me go to sleep like mm -hmm. upset type of thing so you know? basically you're like all right <laughs> trying to fix this is already difficult but clearly it's not difficult enough so let me make it even more difficult by blocking you and then <laughs> Just like ignoring you, and you gotta take the extra, extra, extra steps to make sure that we fix this. <laughs> so is it like a test, like a test of like mm -hmm. endurance or something, or how yeah, much the endurance. person likes you? Okay. Yeah, how much he likes me, or how much he cares about fixing things, and and then it's so bad. But if he doesn't like hit me back up and stuff, I'll give it like thirty minutes. Then I'll hit him back up and be like. Are you really just gonna let me go to sleep upset? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so, so bad. My God. <laughs> so the question is, um, do you do this even when you know you're the one in wrong? Um, like let's say you fucked up. Yeah, I feel and, like if I fucked up, I usually can admit from the get go that I fucked up, mm -hmm. but I would get upset depending on his reaction. Like how <laughs> how he responds to like me owning up to my actions, or if he's still like upset about it for an extended period of time after I've apologized, uh -huh. and then I'll turn it back on him and be upset because he's still upset, and I know that's so bad, dude. <laughs> you know, actually, I feel like this is really common in relationship with where <laughs> when a girl gets mad at a guy and. <laughs> The guy better do everything he can to, like, appease the girl. But then when a guy gets mad at the girl and he stays mad after she apologized, like, once or twice, 
Dude, that thing turns and the girl's mad at you now. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta apologize for being mad. <laughs> this is, it's a loose loose situation, dude. It's like um But yeah. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. I feel like that's just the thing with girls, I guess being mm-hmm. emotional and guys usually just wanting to fix the situation right away. Mm-hmm. You know? So do you feel like as guys, sometimes you just apologize to apologize, even though you're like, nah, this this girl is crazy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. I'm just, <laughs> there are times, but okay, I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I genuinely don't think it's a bad thing if you're apologizing to apologize. Like, of course, if you messed up, if you did something wrong, right? You should apologize and try to like make amends right but if your girl is mad at you because um she blocked me and then i didn't chase her and it, she wants me to apologize for that <laughs> I, I think i'll just apologize and be like i'm sorry like i'm sorry like damn i should came by and then you like try to fix this and then because so that we can resolve the issue and then when she's like all good and happy i'm gonna be like you're so extra like I would call her out on it afterward <laughs> to mm. hopefully change that behavior afterward because I think that's mm. a more effective way to tackle sense. toxic yeah. um, behaviors in a relationship. Yeah, yeah I, I think I do the whole like blocking stuff because I can tell a guy like 50 times, oh, I'm so pissed at you, I'm so mad, like mm-hmm. F you, blah, 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 all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? But it's like, I feel like that's not, like, enough to show him that I'm pissed, you know? That's why I feel like I go the whole nine with the blocking and the uh-huh. all that stuff. Just to let him see how frustrated I am, Mm-mm-mm. I guess. And I guess that coincides with the poor communication skills on my part. So, like, when, when you've told him, like, hey, like, I really need you to do this and this and this, but he hasn't fixed it already. And so you're like, I need to show this boy what's up. I can leave. I have options. I have options. Oh my gosh. It's usually like never when we're trying to solve the problem. It's usually like right when he t- like he does something that I'm pissed or I find out about something that he did. That's oh, usually I when see, I'm I like see. really mad and then mm. yeah. And it's like if he cares about fixing it then he would go out of his way to come to me or pull up my phone or whatever. You know? Mm. <laughs> that makes sense. So I have a question then. Do you ever have a moment where the guy doesn't do it? Like he doesn't chase? Like he just kind of, yeah. all right, whatever. Yeah, it's happened before. Like when I would block him, unfollow and stuff. And then I did like 30 minutes and like nothing from him. I would hit him back up and be like, are you really fucking sleeping right now? Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like we just had this big ass fight and you know, I'm pissed at you and you told to go to sleep, you know, like. It's just stupid shit like that. You know? mm. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I feel like if I were a dude, if some girl was doing that to me, I would let them act like that until they realize that this behavior is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> but I'm a girl, so <laughs> I'm gonna play that card while I still can. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need another drink. She said, I need, she, said, she said, I need another drink. I'm oh getting mad God. right now thinking about this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Viet, don't you, um, do, isn't yours also about relationships, actually? Yeah, mine's is actually about, very similar, actually. So, I guess, you know, during my earlier relationships, like my earliest, earliest, I don't really do this like nowadays because uh-huh. it's uh it's it's kind of too toxic. Wait, mm-hmm. but before I start my memory, how toxic do you think Michelle is on three? One. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me think two. about this. Let me think about this. Okay. Um, you count down, James. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm coming from a guy's perspective. Okay. So just okay. you know. All right. FYI. Okay. Right. Three, two, one. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. We're all kind of the same. We're, we're pretty good. We're good. Like right, seven, seven point five, eight. 
right. 7.5, okay. 7.5, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. so moving on to mine. I, I think, James, you yeah, yours is probably the least toxic. Now just double just double checking with mine and Michelle's. Uh, <laughs> so, like, we're more manipulative in, a, in that nature. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, in that sense. So, I guess, again, during the, like, one of the first couple of relationships I've had, um, it's kind of weird because you don't really realize these moments until you're, like, five years later, like, the memory pops in your head when you're, like, in the shower or studying <laughs> or, like, driving, and then you reflect yeah. on it. You're like, oh, dude, I was so toxic. But anyways, during this time, whenever I would have a like a fight or a a argument, a conflict or anything. Because for me, I'm like more ideal in my in like a what a relationship I thought I like I wanted. I was more ideal at the time. So everything mm-hmm. had to be like magical, everything had to be like perfect. Mm-hmm. So when everything like anything like went wrong or like a conflict or anything like that, I would kind of use the line like, oh maybe we should break up. And that would kind of now like re- ref- reflecting back on it, I would use that as kind of like, you know, like to kind of like, I don't know, like get my way or like have some leverage on the situation or something like that. Mm-hmm. And just reflecting back on it, it was, it wasn't the right thing to do, but it's crazy. Cause I, I felt like I, at that time I did it so naturally. I did it so mm-hmm like in the moment and I wasn't even aware of it because I just it's something I wanted and I just did it you know just something I wanted so much and I I just did it so I think that it's it's crazy because you just don't you don't really reflect on yourself until like I don't even know how it comes to your head like it just comes like randomly but I think that's why nowadays I kind of integrate like my relationships with like a good like social circle and mm-hmm. I try to like talk about what I'm doing so I could kind of like keep myself in check because I think people are naturally toxic in general mm-hmm. and you kind of have to have systems in place in order to make yourself like less toxic to prevent mm. the toxic like situations because right, people, because sometimes like, it's hard to self reflect on it right yeah so like for this instance after after i reflected on that i made like situations where i put systems in place where i would basically not do it again so mm. I I would never say that ever again. I would never say maybe we should break up. If we're going to break up, we're going to break up. If we're going to talk about breakup, we're breaking up. That's that's mm. that's like my new rule. Like I see, I see. Yeah, so if we're going to talk about breaking up, we're going to break up. That's that's why I set that for myself because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to put someone through that like over and over and over again, you know? Have that like doubt in their head. I just, if we're going to break up, if I'm going to talk about breakup, we're going to break up. So that's why I set in place so I could keep myself in check. And like other Mm -hmm. things too, like during a relationship, I I set like little rules for myself so I Mm -hmm. don't do stuff like that again. Mm -hmm. And and it's kind of, you got to just catch yourself doing these things. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not about being toxic. It's more about learning how not to be toxic Mm -hmm. for me. So then I, I have a question. Um, when you say let's break up, right? At the time, what did you think you were trying to achieve? Like, were you trying to, like, kind of like Michelle, be like, I want this girl to prove that she, <laughs> she wants me, or like, what, what, what was the, what was do you think what was the reasoning behind that you were doing this? Like, what what did you want to achieve from that? I think I mean I was. I feel like it's a, like a slurry of emotions. It's yeah, I want I want that test. I want that I want the affirmation that this person like wants to work it out. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I want 
them to see my side of the story. And at the same time, I'm wanting like a perfect relationship. So it's like all this like emotions, like kind of like in a little jar or in a little like melting pot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not just one emotion. It's just like all these things. It's not just like me. It's me wanting everything, basically. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I know for me personally, I have used that line before, like when I'm arguing with the guy, um, let's just break up, you know, and obviously, I don't actually want to break up from this, you know, but I, it's my way of letting him know that like, I'm willing to end it all for the sake of me being right in this situation or like me getting what I want and letting him know like, how extreme... <laughs> extreme i feel about um whatever it is we're arguing about uh -huh. you know the fact that I, that people would say like let's just break up it's kind of like a hail mary type of thing you know uh -huh. like oh if it's not my way then it's it's over you know but obviously i don't think anyone who says it really actually wants to break up because of yeah. whatever it is mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah so see that's the thing that for me i feel like I would never use that line, <laughs> no matter how mad I get or how frustrated I get. Because I feel like if I say that, we might actually break up and I'm too scared to actually break up. <laughs> like, I might be like, I'm too afraid. Like, you're like, you know what, maybe we should just break up. And they say yes. I'm going to be like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I was just kidding. She's like, <laughs> well, thank God you said it first. <laughs> yeah, I would literally be like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. I'll never say it again. I'm sorry. You know, like, I would never do that. All right, James, in your next relationship... Every time you get mad, you gotta block them. And then you gotta say, maybe we should break up. Both of those things together, yeah. all right? I thought, I thought we're here to get uh, less toxic, not nah, teach I'm each other kidding. how to be more I'm toxic. Just, you know I'm kidding. Oh yeah. my god, it's so funny. That's such a little double standard because I just thought about it right now. If a guy was doing that shit to me, like the whole blocking uh -huh. and stuff, I was like, this guy's a child, bro. Like, why do I want to be with someone like this? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I die. Has any of your exes ever tried to do that? Like where they tried to like reverse it on you? Or like, oh, I'm going to block you too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to block everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? I actually have not dated a guy who's done that. I feel like all the guys I've dated are much more willing to compromise than me mm. a lot nicer than me mm -hmm. so i feel like once i hit them with those extremities they usually just like fall back you know mm. but it's usually with or it's happened with guys that i've just talked to or like i'm seeing mm -hmm. that they would actually like retaliate you know because <laughs> mm -hmm. i feel like there's less to lose in that situation because we're not like in a relationship mm. you know that makes sense. See. How about you, Vid? Has a girl ever like reversed it on you? <sighs> Reverse what? Oh, the blocking. Like be like, oh, like let's we should just break up. Oh, actually, yeah. They're like, yeah, because <laughs> there's not. Okay, so when I used to use that a lot, when mm -hmm. in my earlier stage, they would they would get sick of it. They're like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's 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 break up. And then I'll be like, okay, let's break up. And that's how Wait, so you guys some of my up? breakups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I told you that's actually you could actually break up. No, I know, I know I that, but line. it's again, <laughs> it's like a toxic like kind of thing, you know, because you're yeah. just like messing with the like relationship, right? Damn, you're messing messing with the integrity of the relationship. But mm -hmm. yeah, you don't so, really okay, realize but, these things. Not to not to defend it, but just to be kind of like devil's advocate. Do you feel like since you guys couldn't get over that hump in that place through that argument, even though it's like a toxic trait thing, do you feel like it's an indication that the relationship would have never worked out anyway? Uh, I don't know. Because I feel like maybe if we were more mature people, it might have been different, you know? Because at the time, I felt like I wasn't mature. I wasn't, I don't know. I wasn't in a mature mindset, I feel like. 
because I, I would do things like this. I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware of my actions. I was like very, you know, trying to get my ways. So mm-hmm. I feel like a relationship is you kind of have to work together. But I wasn't working together because I was just trying to like have my side. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe you're right. I know for me, it comes from a place of not being able to fully articulate how I feel and express how I feel through words, you know, so then I resort to like actions such as like the blocking and stuff. And I know when I say things like, let's just break up, mm-hmm. it it hurts the relationship more down the long road than for the sake of the argument, you know, because I know I don't actually want to break up. But I'm letting him know that I'm willing to end the relationship on such a a small matter, you know? So overall in the relationship, like, as a general thing, it just damages it more, you know? Because it lets him know that, oh, you're really willing to break up after such a small matter? Like, what happens later on down the road when we actually argue about something big? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. See, see. <laughs> okay. So shall we rate uh, Vitz toxicity on this story? Yeah. Do the countdown. Do the countdown. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Let me think about this. I'm, I'm trying to think in comparison. Okay. All right. So you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Dang, I almost gave it a 10 out of 10. Wait, Michelle, why'd you give it a 6? Um, because I feel like just saying it isn't that bit of a deal. If you say it and then, like, you stop talking to her for, like, a week, so then she realizes that you were serious about wanting to break up, I feel like that would have hurt more than we're just arguing and then you say it. And I'm like, okay, you want to break up? Then why are you still talking to me, to, like, the next day type of thing? Hmm. Mm. I feel like it's pretty toxic because, again, I feel like it's trying to get your ways. Like, you you have some idea where it's going to go. And you're trying to play some cards or something like that. That's why. I, rate, I rated it pretty high. James, why yeah, did you I- give it a 10? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, okay. It's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, Because to me, it just sounds like this person doesn't care about the relationship. Right? Just like how Michelle, when she asked, like, hey, like, when I block you, I want you to show your faithfulness by doing this and this, right? So for me, I want you to show faithfulness by not throwing these words lightly. Hmm. You know what I mean? So I think mm-hmm. when you, like throw these like words so lightly it's it just comes across so like hurtful and like this person doesn't care about the relationship um whether that was the intention or not you know um so i feel like yeah that's a pet peeve of mine i personally would never do that for me if i'm like asking you to break up like, I thought about it for weeks, and, yeah. like, I'm just really ready to break up with you. Um, so, yeah, to me, that's, like, a really toxic trait. Yeah. No, I agree. 100%. I feel like in an argument, if a girl throws you that line, like, are you taking her seriously? So, you know? Wait. I, I feel like if we're arguing and a guy goes, oh, let's just break up and stuff, I wouldn't take him that serious. You know, because I know he's saying it out of the spur of the moment and he's upset. Mm -hmm. But knowing how we are when we're not upset at each other, this is not something worth breaking up over. So I feel Mm -hmm. like as a girl, for me, I just don't take it that seriously. Like, I'll understand how upset he is because he said it. But actually breaking up, I just don't think that's like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I think maybe it depends on context. If they're like, I don't know. I could see both sides, but like more 
I think it's still more towards toxic. Oh, it's definitely <laughs> toxic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but to me, I feel like even if we're in arguing, right? Let's say we're arguing and arguing. She's like, let's just break up. I'll be like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. You know, and that's I mean, kind of hurtful. Like, yeah, it's very like, hurtful. Like, wait, how can you say that so easily? Like, mm -hmm. I know we're arguing, but like, like, how yeah. can you say that? Like, you know? Yeah. You bitch. Like, you know, like I'm just kidding, but you know, like, um, I'll be. Yeah, I think, I I think it's also I personally feel like I really try to when I get even when I get into arguments with people, I try to withhold things that are just has like no um it doesn't further the discussion, like you know, I I don't try to throw even in an argument I don't want to say certain things just to hurt them or just to be toxic or just to like manipulate them in any way i feel like even when i get in like heated arguments i try to if anything i think i kind of get stubborn about it and argue for my points a lot but i think i wouldn't say anything that would be like well it's because you're this and this this type of person and you're this and this like i feel like or like i, I feel like i try to avoid saying things that are like solely hurtful you know yeah, that makes sense. So that's just me. Man, I'm kind of glad I'm not in a relationship right now. <laughs> yeah. It has its pros and cons, being in a relationship, for sure. Yeah, it has its pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. Y'all good? Um, I think, yeah, I think that was a good, good self-reflecting moment. Yeah. I learned a lot about you guys. Um, <laughs> I may, yeah, I may. I start uh, contacting guys slightly less. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's it was pretty fun to talk about it with you guys and get like yeah. another POV or like from a guy's POV about certain mm -hmm. actions. Because mm -hmm. I I understand that as a girl I do get away with a lot of actions, you know, in arguments and in relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, I do understand from a guy's perspective, it's a little different and it's not okay to be acting the way that I do sometimes, but, you know, like I said, I I only do it when I know it's something that I can handle type of thing. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thanks for joining us, Michelle, on our podcast. Mm -hmm. Of course, thank you for having me. This is my first ever like time recording anything and especially talking about something as interesting as being toxic. So I'm glad James thought of me for this topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah, you know, I was like thinking, all right, who can I pick for this uh, topic? <laughs> oh, Michelle. No, I'm just kidding. No, honestly, I, okay, I I just want to know, I just want her to know, like, I picked Michelle first. Okay, what, well, that still sounds bad, honestly. It's <laughs> okay. But it was unrelated, all right, unrelated. I just thought it would be fun to talk about um being toxic together. No, yeah, like, I in general, I think James and I just talked a lot about, like, shit that happens in relationships, mm -hmm. um, sharing stupid shit that's happened to us, so... Yep. This was a really fun topic to elaborate on together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was fun having you on our podcast. Um, yes. Thanks for being our I, second I guest. I would love to guest star again. You know, yes, you have yes, other computer, topics. Yeah. <laughs> we'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're the Memory Club podcast. Again, we're like a book club, but we share memories instead. I'm Vit. And my name is James. I'm Michelle. All right. Peace. Peace. Our intro music was produced by Nightwave.